Good morning all. Well, it's a beautiful cloudless day today, so I thought I'd sit in the garden and dream of electric transport, specifically the new Golf GTE. Now I've got the brochure, haven't got the car though. But it is the best of both worlds. 30 miles on electric drive, or about 500 and something on petrol, and if you combine the petrol engine and the electric drive together, this thing's an animal. I've actually driven it out of test drive. Fabulous. And I've got a largely south-facing roof. And if I covered that in solar panels, that car could be charged from the sun and there'd be no cost for fuel. Well, I've got the roof, just haven't got the solar panels. So I suppose I'll just have to make do with my electric bicycle. Uh, this 80 watt solar panel here and the big car battery which is fully charged. You can see that from the blue LED on the charge controller. I can hear some buzzing coming from this. It's actually coming from the positive connector on the positive terminal. It's a sort of acoustic mechanical electrical type thing. So I'll just give that a wiggle. See if I can make that go away. It's just poor connections, they've all corroded in the rain. Now I'm a bit concerned about the battery for the bike. Um, I shouldn't be because the key is switched off so there shouldn't be any uh, drain on the batteries in there but of course if they do go below minimum voltage they could get damaged. So I'm going to open this up and just check um, with my multimeter that the cell voltages are all still okay. So here they are, the uh, eight Headway lithium ion phosphate cells, uh, 10 amp hours each, I think, if I remember rightly. And uh, they're all measuring a nice healthy 3.33 volts each, and they're all almost exactly the same voltage, so I'm quite happy about that. Now, I wasn't very ha happy about these uh, bits of biro as um, standoffs for holding the the one pack away from the other so they don't close in or at least so that these um, orange pegs don't go out of alignment. So I've bought some uh, clear PVC pipe and it does seem to be a reasonably good fit. It's not particularly tight but I think that will have plenty of st strength to stop the batteries sort of shearing across from each other. So I'm going to cut some pieces of that off now. Now these pegs are exactly half an inch long so I think I'm going to cut the pipe to an inch and a millimeter if that's a measurement so that it kind of acts as a little bit of suspension to stop the pegs smashing together. An inch and a millimeter. This is one of those rare occasions where I'm actually using my cutting mat for cutting. Yes I think they're much better they act as little buffers to stop these completely closing up and also they have reasonably good shear uh, movement there. I like those. Now the next thing is I want to be able to use all the energy in these cells without worrying about taking the cell voltage too low. And so for that I've got a couple of these, um, I'm only going to use one, but these little um, lithium battery alarms which you can adjust the alarm voltage on uh, which is quite handy. So that nine-way connector will fit into this nine-way balanced charging lead. So these wires have to connect to the nine points on these eight cells, the outer two connections, which actually are here, the positive and negative, and then every other connection on the pack. So uh, what I'm planning to do is use a little piece of Vera board like this stuck on somewhere like that, solder the nine wires onto that, and then solder nine uh, probably solid core wires so that they're sort of relatively fixed off to all the various points on the pack so that I've got balanced charge access. And that of course will allow me not only to uh, fully discharge these with the alarm but also to balance charge them again once the pack's uh, discharged. So I've put the battery box back in the bike and it slides in uh, up here and then there's this bar. So what I'm going to do is put this plastic 
box with a transparent lid on there just above that bar so that uh, inside there I can have most of the balance charging lead uh, visible and you can plug the alarm into there so you can see what the voltages are and that'll all be inside this uh, sort of moderately weatherproof box and then um, you just undo the four screws there and connect the balance charging lead up to the balance charger when the battery needs to be recharged. So I'm just going to mark uh, the positions that that box is going to fit on uh, and then I'll raise it up slightly from um, this position so that it's uh, sitting above this bar here by a couple of millimeters or so. So I think the first thing I'll do is drill the holes um, for this box. And it's actually going to come a bit this way to the right and that means that the balance charging leads can be almost up at this end of the battery pack. So I think I might mount the Vera board on here and then run the little wires out to all the various points on the battery pack to get all the various um, voltage points. So there's the box mounted uh, external to the battery pack, hole drilled all the way through and the balance charging lead will sort of come through that hole and then that'll be coiled up inside there with the alarm module inside it so that you can read the display. The front cover will go on there, the translucent plastic cover. And now I need to uh, put this around the back and then rig up a way of getting all these balance leads onto my piece of Vera board on here and then distribute it out to the various points on the battery pack. Now, as I remember things on the Turnergy balance charger, the ground pin is to the right and these were kind of wired, well, almost backwards with black being on the left. And I just can't decide whether I should rearrange all these wires. I mean, I like the color coded sequence, but it's just back to front. Shall I pull them all out and put black on the ground side? It does seem to be more logical. Red is illogical then, but um, I think I might go for just uh, turning all those right round. Well, these little barbs were very uh, keen to stay where they are. They didn't want to come out at all. So I'm going to have to live with the inconsistent color code and I've just put a plus and a minus on the plastic body there instead. So there are the nine wires soldered to the piece of Vera board. Now I'm just going to run some hot glue over this end, try not to get it on the solder, and then I can remake those solder joints because some of them aren't beautiful. Right, now I've got the bit that I'm really not looking forward to particularly, where I have to wire each of these points here to the connections on these batteries and of course these batteries can't sort of be switched off while I do this everything's live everything's well not live but everything's powered up so I've got to be very careful that I get this right I've also got to mount this somewhere and thinking about it it doesn't really feel good putting it up on this piece here so I might just stick it in between these two cells with some double-sided sticky stuff I'm going to use this old reel of, uh, it's very old stuff, um, single core blue wire, because uh, I've got plenty of it. And I think solid core is probably going to be better for when I have to actually put the uh, connection underneath these screw terminals. Let's just see how we go. So I've got some of these double sided sticky pads, but they're very old. I don't know whether they're very sticky anymore. Uh, so let's try and mount that in between these two cells. That'll have to do, I think. Now, this is really not working very well at all because as I wrap this wire around the bolt and then attempt to tighten the bolt, it just pulls on the wire and then this is pulling across like this and it's all not very satisfactory. So I think I'm going to have to do it a different way where I don't disturb these large uh, screw terminal connections. I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole in the center of the strip that links across between two batteries and attach a little solder lug onto there and then solder the wire onto that solder lug. But it does mean I'm going to have to buy some more bits. 
So I'm going to uh, stop this at this point. Now one of the problems I've got is the way this pack has been built. Because I've got two separate parts to the pack, and they kind of join in the middle but not very permanently, um, I've got two connections out on the far left here, two on the far right out there, but five of the connections are all in here. This is one, the, the linking fuse at that point. Paws and Neg are two more, and then these two link pieces here are the remaining two. So five wires go in here, but I can only get them in here when these two are apart. And then I have to bring these two parts together, and then all the wires are all going to sort of buckle up. It's, uh, it's a topological nightmare. So, not wishing to be defeated, I've spent several hours coming up with a different strategy, and that is to put a four-way connector on the one pack, and a five-way on the other, and these are it's completely separate, not attempt to do all nine ways together. Then the nine-way connector from the uh, balance charge lead will split off into the two uh, parts. And then these connections have all been put onto uh, the various tap points on the cells by drilling holes into these uh, strips and putting these um, little solder lug terminals on. I found them in uh, a case. So I had those, so it's taken quite a while to do all that. But that is now done. These two will come together like that. The two plugs will go in here and the balance charge lead will go out from there. And so finally here it is. Uh, all the power leads are on, the linking fuse here, the pause and neg connections here. All the balance charge connections, uh, grey being the most negative, which is there. Black being the most positive, which is there. So that all looks good. Let's assemble it. And now it's all back together and I'm going to plug in the uh, voltage monitor. It says it's an 8C5, 26.5 volts, 333, 333, 333, 333, 331, 336.5. Significantly different to others when I measured them on my multimeter is all pretty much exactly the same now I just wonder whether it's You know resistances in this cable. There are connectors of course inside as well as this connector It's not an ideal setup. It's been an absolute nightmare to construct But it might just be good enough to tell me When the cells are empty and when I should stop uh, using them and when I should start charging them not quite sure what the balance charge is going to make of all these different voltages, or is it just this cheap, nasty um, monitor thing? I suppose I could measure all these points with my DVM. Not really sure at the moment.